I'm Thor. Welcome to the Dragon Ship. It's a nice Sunday evening. I decided to jump on here and make a video. Something near and dear to my heart. Yes. Marriage. Long-term relationships. Yes. Something that I coach on. I coach on the sustainability and durability and how to have a happy marriage and a beautiful long-term relationship. It's what most people want. They want, don't want to go through life alone. They want to have good long-term relationships. So the question remains, is she going to divorce you if she's influenced by her friends? Well, I mean, it's one of the things that I talk about in my course. It's number, number 19 is uh, really important. One of the questions of added liabilities is, is your wife the influencer amongst her friends or is she influenced? Well, it's an interesting question. Uh, when you get married, a lot of men are facing some very interesting and very difficult times. I'm going to talk a little bit about it this evening and, and uh, let's get some. So let's talk about some articles that were recently published. Uh, published and their articles based on articles that were published a few years ago, which were based on articles that were published a few more years ago, which were based on pretty common knowledge that was out there that if you were a married man and you had a, a wife that you were quite comfortable with, and this was happening all across the U S and still does today, high divorce rates we have initiated by women when one of her close friends or relatives gets a divorce, she is incredibly more likely to divorce you because of the social conditioning and her friends influencing her. Let's take a look at these articles and see what it has to say. And then at the very end of this video, I'm going to tell you exactly who's at fault <clears throat> if you're in this situation. I'll tell you a little bit about what you can do about it. So let's get some. We'll share this screen and we'll get right down to it. And so that's not exactly it. Let's jump over to the study. So here we go. This is the Times Union and uh, this particular article uh, came out, Divorce is Contagious by uh, Christy Gustafson Gust Bartlett. Oh, she's got a hyphenated name. Hmm. Very interesting. She must be married. She kept both names. Something very interesting I'd like to talk about much later. You know, once you're married, eh, it's commonly said socially, happy wife, happy life. Couldn't be further from the truth. If divorce is contagious, obviously there's an unhappy wife. You're not going to have a happy life. It would be far better, and this will tie into who's at fault. If you choose a good wife, you will have a great life. And if the wife's willing to ride with you, she's going to take your name. So, divorce. Divorce is contagious, at least... That's the word, according to a large study that found if your friends are divorced, you're much more likely to dissolve your marriage as well. One study has that number as high as 75% more likely. 75% more likely if one of her friends is getting divorced. What do girls do? They get together. They have coffee. They have girls' nights out. If she's getting divorced, she's not happy. She's sharing her emotions. And, of course, women are quite empathetic. And it's a good thing, too. It's really a feature, uh, not a flaw, but she's going to feel those feelings. And if she is influenceable, you need to guard against it. The study has produced that a shocking too many stat included researchers from Brown Harbor on Harvard University of California, San Diego. It found that 75% more likely to divorce if one of your friends is also divorced. That study was done well before the pandemic hit. Anecdotally, it seems that more people are splitting up. Some research suggests that this is true. Another study disputes that observation, saying divorce rates are down, attributing it in large part to the cost associated with splitting up. Now, that's interesting. I'm going to stop right there because I took just a cursory look at that. I don't think the divorce rates are down. 
It's just dropped because a lot of courts have placed large restrictions and delays because of the pandemic, not the filing rate. So, I mean, you got to take this with a grain of salt. You know, this is just really kind of to, to make it startling. However, there is a grain of truth here. Uh, regardless of if there are fewer divorces, the fact is 50% of marriages end of divorce. And if friends or colleagues or family members are no longer married, you're more likely to divorce as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, this lady's on the radio, so obviously she's going to talk about it. Where did this come from? I'll share it with you. Skull. It came from quite a while ago, but it goes back much further. Here is an article on fatherly. And I don't agree with everything on this site. They got some strange things, too. This was written by Lauren Vinopal back in 2018. Divorce is contagious, and that might be a good thing. Do you see the spin? The social conditioning for a woman, if you're not happy, leave. It's his fault. You're going to find it interesting on who I think is at fault. So having a divorced friend increases a person's divorce risk, but only if they're stuck in an unhappy situation. The studies don't show that. It shows that they're influenced and they become unhappy. So divorce is contagious, study suggests. Having a close friend who's divorced increases your risk of ending your marriage. But that doesn't mean that happily married people are vulnerable to some sort of airborne, irreconcilable differences. It means that people are already struggling in their marriage a happily divorced friend could be all it takes to send them over the edge. Ding dong, I totally disagree. I think that it's already in the air, maybe so, but there's women are very socially influenced. And it really doesn't take that. With social media and the pressure of having attractive men being sexually available to women to validate their unhappiness and their emotional needs, if you slip once, men, this is easy to happen because they're conditioned to do this. This is, this is part of social conditioning today. And this is nothing more than evidence of that. And remember, it's 70, almost 75% of divorces are initiated by women. Many women, after they've had children and they're aging out of the sexual marketplace, and they have what's called FOMO. Fear of missing out. I raised my children. I did all this work. I'm missing out on this wonderful career. And I'm missing out on all of those wonderful men that are much better than my husband. I would venture to say that after five years of separation, ask those women how well off they are. Most of them would go back in a heartbeat. There's videos all over the internet on how sorry they are that they broke their family based on these feelings. These are passing feelings. Feelings come, feelings go. You can recreate feelings. But this is what we're told is the right way to go. Books are produced on how wonderful it is to become a freshly single and minglable woman again, especially at a later age. Um, and considering that our legal system fully supports this in monetary cash and prizes, even after the children are grown at least in my state, if the children are still in college, regardless of age, you'll still pay. So that's kind of interesting. So uh, I, I, I find this fascinating and interesting, and I want to uh, read a situation to you guys um, that I found on Reddit. And it's about a 31-year-old female that did a cheat and she cheated on her husband very much in a situation and regrets it. So based on what I just said, many times during the divorce, they'll ex a person will explore outside of their relationship and it, it has detrimental effect. Um, and a lot of a lot of men and women don't realize that, you know, the grass is definitely not greener on the other side. So when you hear your friends on how wonderful it is to be divorced or be single, if you're a married person or in a long-term relationship, you should definitely use caution and realize if you're being influenced. And if you're the husband, you need to be the primary influencer in this relationship. 
So I wanted to go over this uh, briefly. This is, I found this on Reddit and it's just to illustrate her regret, some of her inability to take accountability. And yet she's still trying to. And I thought this was one of the most relevant ways to do it. So this woman uh, writing that she cheated on her perfect husband, 33 years old. She's 31 of five years. So she married out at the end of her sexual market value being the highest. He was a little bit older than her. It should be a formula to work. And uh, I'm going to kind of comment on the end of where I thought this could go. This could be easily preventable, in my opinion. My husband and I have been married for five years together for nine. So they've been together a long time. I messed up in the worst way possible. Sorry for the length. Allow me to preface this post by stating that my husband is perfect to me in every imaginable, in every way imaginable. He's kind, sincere, honest, open-minded, intelligent, easygoing, humorous. He is and always has been a very down-to-earth kind of person. I'm attracted to him in every way, and our emotional, verbal, physical relationship has never had any issues. So if it's never had any issues, I question what's going on here. And you should too. It's it's very interesting and it's it's cathartic to think about, particularly if you're in a relationship, you should question several things in what you're doing and what you're observing and not be complacent. I work in an industry that requires a fair amount of travel, two out of four weeks per month for about three to four days per week. I assume those are overnights. Most of my travel involved going to conferences and whatnot with colleagues at work and or in the industry. I often need to have dinner and drinks with these people as it is part of the job. I think you can see the issue coming up. At the event about three months ago, I met this man. Let's call him Hank. From the first moment I met him, I found Hank to be absolutely gorgeous. He was the type of guy who could control any room with his charisma and the way he interacts with others. People were just instantly drawn to him and his personality, including myself. Later on that evening, I was having a drink at the hotel bar by myself before heading up to my room to call it a night. I wonder why she was doing that and just not taking the drink to her room. Interesting question. At least I thought Hank shows up and asks if he can grab a seat next to me. He remembered my name, which was a surprise given how many people he was meeting at once. In any case, Hank and I got to talking and I ended up having more drinks with him. Flirting ensued, then touching, then me agreeing to let him walk me up to my hotel room. You know what happens then, the cheating. I let him in and that was that. Now, this is a good time to state that Hank was unaware of my marriage. I never told him I was married. I never even casually dropped it in our conversation. In fact, when he woke up the next morning, I immediately started bawling. Took her all night to ball? Well, maybe there was a different kind of bawling going on before the real bawling started. Hmm? Shocked as to what I had done, Hank attempted to console me, and I told him through tears I was married. All I remember is him saying, oh, shit. And looking at me completely shocked. Then I remember the door closing a few minutes later. I told my work I was feeling very ill. And they let me catch an early flight. When I got home, my husband was just getting home from work. He thought I was surprising him by coming home early. I had done that before. But he saw that something was wrong. I lost it and told him everything right then and there. I will never get the image out of his eyes out of my head, of his eyes out of my head. Such an incredible amount of shock mixed with sadness. He tried to compose himself the best he could, and I noticed the slight shaking in his hands. He didn't say a word, packed an overnight bag, and left. He texted me an hour after saying he was staying at his brother's for the night and left at that. Can anybody see what's going on here? Not only did she have that, she unloaded it on him like a double-barrel shotgun right into his chest when he wasn't looking. To come and confess it immediately, I got to tell you, honesty is the best policy. A full disclosure is not. She needed to suck that shit up for a while. Yes, absolutely. At some point, maybe. But she should have took care of business. And that was just using her emotional you know, breakdown and throwing it on the person she supposedly loved the most. It's kind of evil in a way. 
Uh, shouldn't have done that. That was the worst thing to do. And now she's feeling the consequence. Fast forward three months to now. I have asked him if we can seek marriage counseling and he won't answer me. I got a different opinion on marriage counseling too. I'll tell you that sometime. I have asked him if we can talk about it and he doesn't want to. He slept in the spare bedroom since I told him. The fact that he has said maybe 10 things to me in three months, like took the garbage that like he took the garbage out or asked me if I was done using the shower. Good for him. I know my actions were wrong and completely 100% my fault. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why I even cheated on him in the first place. Gentlemen, listen to this right here. And ladies, if you're listening, this is an important part about female instinctual sexual nature. Call it what you will. But the power of emotions and of feelings, placing yourself in the wrong spot at the wrong time, adding an inebriating substance that lowers your emotional defenses. When the, the, the sexual drive instinct has to be extremely powerful in a woman at the right time, not that it's more than a man, it's not, but at the right time with the right arousal, it is game on with the woman. There's not even much thinking to go on there. So just exposing yourself in that arena is a recipe for disaster. I've heard it said so many times by so many clients, you know, when they got down to the nitty gritty of why did my wife cheat on me? And they asked her, and I know that the answer was honest and true. I don't know. It just happened. It just happened. And I think that's really a truly honest answer. When the arousal's at such a pitch, there's validation going on. And she is exposed and not protected from it or protecting herself from it. This is what you get. And I'll tell you at the end well, who I think is responsible. I want to save my marriage. I'm desperate. I will do anything to fix this. Our friends and our families know what happened. I really disagree with telling your friends and family what goes on if this is the case. You either in the relationship, but you certainly don't broadcast it because you need emotional support. Horrible mistake. My own parents have told me if he wants a divorce, then I should honor it. And she should. I hope to God that it doesn't come to that. Any advice is appreciated. I don't know what else to do. I want to cry every time I see him and smother him with love and kisses and affection. I believe this is true. She really probably does feel this way. She was a victim of her own circumstance and weakness of her own flesh and her own instincts and arousal, uh, He, at least based on this writing. He doesn't display any emotion in front of me, and I just know that it's destroying him inside. I will do anything and everything for him to get us better. Okay. I'm not going to go much further than that, but you know, she was at work. This happens quite frequently. Uh, it's the fear of missing out is very strong. And there's articles all on this that discourage and encourage women all over the place to look for this, be a career woman. Look, when you're exposed to members of the opposite sex, there are forces at play that you don't think about. You don't even, you're not even fully aware of them and they whittle away at your willpower. There is desire. There is pheromones. There is hormones that affect emotions and the emotions aren't tangible thoughts, but they're emotions and emotions of excitement and all of those things that are boiled together and novelty. Just the fact that novelty is introduced is so powerful uh, and that's why when I come to my conclusion of who's at fault in these cases, and if you're in this case or you're getting into a situation where you have a dead bedroom and you've been married for a very long time and it's not fun and you're the man, it's 100% your fault. 100%. Why would I say that? Because it is. If you're not taking care of your business by leading in your long-term relationship, that is creating a security around her. You don't have to be paranoid. You just, she can do anything she wants, but you've got to create that security of feeling. You have to fulfill her emotional needs. You need to provide novelty. Guys, you need to be touching her all the time. You need to be picking out select times to introduce something new, exciting, or maybe even scary. It doesn't have to be sex, but it has to be something that initiates emotion. 
And this is a forever project. You know, if you're sitting on your laurels and you gain weight or you're not paying attention to her, or if you're working too much, another thing you should be paying attention to, if she is working full time outside of the house and exposed to other men overnight, you should seriously reconsider getting another job and or leaving the relationship. That's right. That kind of exposure, particularly day in, day out, week after week after week, is a disaster for a married person. I've seen it. I've lived in culprit culture. It's incredible. Even a woman that works part-time and works in a call center and she's there and there's a there's this heated emotion there all the time. As soon as she sees a man that fits her needs as an alpha and pays some validational attention, she doesn't think it rationally like a man does and try to solve that problem. No, but she has these feelings that courses through her veins and puts her into uh, the mode that she is available, even if she doesn't know it. And the more that happens, the more, the less she thinks of it and the more that she feels good. And she likes the feeling. The feeling is like a drug and that feeling is incredible. It is what drives our species forward because think of it. Getting pregnant and having a child is a high cost for a female. It's a very, very high cost. In, in times past, it had a significant detriment on the mother's life. It could kill them, and many times did. So how on earth, if that was the risk, who would in their right mind take that chance? Well, because the drive is so strong. Not the libido, the frequency, but the drive is so strong when the conditions are met that this is the right DNA. This is the right emotion. This is so exciting. This fulfills the need. This will, the list goes on and on and on. It's not really tangible and it's hard for men to understand fully, but many men recognize this. They can see it when a woman is receptive, even if she doesn't know it. And so if your woman has a career out there, fantastic. That's wonderful. But you really got extra work to do and you need to know who her friends are. And who her friends at work are. Introduce. Make sure they know you. In fact, be friendly. Become friends with her friends. Make sure that you're charismatic and social and that you understand them. Don't be isolated from her friends. If you are isolated from her friends, it's a recipe for disaster. You don't know what's going on and you don't know what's influencing her. As the leader in your long-term relationship or marriage, these are responsibilities, so it is 100% your fault. You chose her. She went down that path. Okay, she did. Now, as long as she doesn't have mental illness, it's your fault. So deal with it. And how can you deal with it? Well, you can listen to someone like me. There's lots of guys out there. Uh, take, a, take a listen to some of the red pill guys out there that uh, delve into this space. Uh, Rolo Tomasi is an excellent uh, listen uh, from a uh, intellectual standpoint and very well researched. Uh, Rich Cooper's one that you can listen to. He's pretty good too. Uh, Paul Benjamin from Apex Mindset. Uh, net. He's very understanding. He has done couples counseling before, and he's very well versed on this psychology with, with uh, men and women and the issues that they face as they enter these long-term relationships and uh, make them better and stronger over time. Uh, you can also visit me, um, becomedurable.com, and see some of the videos that I have posted there and possibly join the dragon ship we talk about these and many other issues once a month and we do it in a three-hour webinar format come and play it should be fun so uh enjoy and uh skull see you next time